Delivery. <laughs> Hi. Hey, sweetheart. Come here. Oh, big hug. Oh, no, I brought it. <laughs> oh, baby. Brought you a bag of all your favorite desserts, bakeries, baked goods. So, figured if we need to eat our feelings, now would be the perfect time we can do so together. Yeah, your favorites. Don't eat them all in one place, though. <laughs> Don't want you to get sick. Well, maybe. Maybe we eat them all in one place. And... I don't know. Maybe it's stupid to buy you baked goods. Well, it's, well, I mean, well, it's never a stupid idea to buy baked goods, but I feel like... I just feel like I really want to help you more. Because what you just went through was really brutal. And I just wish that I could be more helpful and all I can think to do is to come over here and love on you and bring you food. But and I'm trying very, very hard not to talk shit about your parents. <laughs> really hard. Or maybe that's exactly what you need. I don't know. I would be surprised if you knew even because this is... So disturbing. For starters, I, it's important to me that you understand that this is not normal on their part. You are not hurting anybody with who you choose to love. Or with who you were born destined to love. However you want to swing it, it doesn't matter why... You love who you love. There's nothing harmful about that. And yet your parents are treating you like you're a bad person for completely unjustified means. It's, it's very disturbing that they are the villains of this story that they're limiting your quality of life simply to what make them, what, what are they, what are they looking out for? I just, I wondered too, I'm like, does it really bother them? Does it really bother them that you're queer or are they worried about their image with their, with their homophobic friendship circle? Say, Oh, the, the queer kid from that family. Are they more concerned about preserving their self image than they are concerned about, their child's quality of life, loving their child. And also you're a product of them. You're a reflection, you're a direct reflection of them. And maybe that's what they're afraid of too. Maybe they have a lot of, I mean, studies have shown that homophobia generally runs rampant in people who do feel by curiosity and are afraid to address it or feel shameful for it or wish to be different. And so they project that energy and in an aggressive villainous manner on those who <laughs> are not hurting them. And yet they will launch attack after attack on perfect strangers who have done nothing wrong. So it's possible that your parents too are seeing themselves in you right now. And it doesn't matter. Like the, the reason doesn't matter. They're, they're not parenting. That's why I'm so disturbed by the fact that they have said, I love you many, many times since you were born. And, and they are not behaving like people who love you. And what worries me for you as well. So now you're back in the closet. Sure, we'll get to that. But I'm worried that you're going to learn to associate love with being, I'm, I'm afraid you're going to learn to associate love with selfish relationships. I'm afraid that you're going to learn to associate love with parasitic nature. I'm afraid that you're going to associate love with control, that other you're going to be in relationships with people who choose to 
use you as an extension of themselves to objectify you, to control you, and you're not going to recognize the red flags because these red flags have been normalized under this roof with your parents. And your parents' job is to parent you well, and they aren't. And they're not going to have to suffer for that, but you are, and I'm furious. And I'm just so sorry because you don't deserve this. You didn't ask to be their kid. And it's what sucks too is there's a lot that you love about your parents. And it's just really heartbreaking that, you know, we've learned that they're not, honestly, we've learned that as much as you may love your parents, we've also learned that they, they need to earn. People need to earn their right into our lives, even family. And we've learned that you're going to have to exclude them from huge chunks of your life, huge life experiences and it is difficult you know my my experience with my parents very different than yours as far as context but similar in the sense that I've learned that I, most of the time I mean come on you're my emergency contact I don't write them as my emergency contact I don't trust them I don't trust them I don't trust them when it comes to anything important or hard, anything difficult I've ever been through, they wanted nothing to do with it. It makes them uncomfortable if I am not, if we don't look like the perfect family and I'm not the perfect happy kid. It's crazy. It's actually crazy. They they expect happy, happy, happy 24-7 and nobody is. They aren't even, but they live in perfect denial of, they have very selective memories, very selective listening. And anytime I've ever had something horrible happen to me, and as you know, I've been through quite a bit, I've learned that my parents, I'm safer without telling my parents. I'm safer to not try to call on their support. And what's so disturbing is, you know, if I had, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, better parents, there are a lot of incidents that could have ended very differently. There are a lot of incidents that could have ended far more gracefully than they had if I had adult support, adult perspective, an adult team, a family I can trust to have my back. I think about all of the ways in which I could have used supportive parents. But here we come back to you, baby. They just simply don't exist. My parents will never be capable. They're limited. They are limited in what they have to offer as parents. And so I learned to accept the fact that life is just going to be, in a lot of ways, harder for me than friends of mine who do have more, less limited, more functional parents. And I've learned to accept it. And I've learned that they can only be a part of so much of my life. And of course, what's annoying is being in denial, as so many parents are, where they fall short, they're always berating me to be in better touch and to tell them more about my life and refuse to take responsibility for the fact that I would love to tell them everything about my life if I trusted that they would respond responsibly and fairly and with support, but they never do. They'll they'll respond. I, I, I rarely end a conversation with them in which I don't feel worse than when I first picked up the line, you know? And so they feel to recognize, well, my not being in touch as much as they would like isn't me just being an, oh, like a, like a rebellious kid. It means I would love to have a strong relationship with my parents, but my parents are making that impossible for me. I can't share my day in and day out with them because they will be jerks. They'll be unsupportive or they'll they'll be mean, you know, like who wants to talk to that? And they don't recognize that as the problem. The problem is, I guess, just me. And so how this is all relevant to you is it's just like, I hate that I even have to, I hate that you're even in this situation, but I feel like As your best friend, I have a couple of tips. (laughs) 
If you're seeking any guidance, again, I've not been exactly in your shoes, but I, I do highly recommend A, we accept where your parents are limited. So we've just learned it's heartbreaking and very disappointing and very wrong that your parents can't accept the fact that you will love people of the same sex. So we've learned that your parents are idiots. Here we go. We've learned that they are unsupportive in a very important way. And there is a huge part of your life and here comes the next part that you have a right to keep from them. Now I understand this gets complicated. I know some people, they only want to, so let's say you're trying to date and the person you're trying to date says, look, I don't date people who are in the closet. It's too complicated. It's too messy. I want to show you off and pictures and videos and with friend groups and meet the families and mix the families. And so if you're in the closet, it isn't going to work. But I feel like that's very short-sighted. I feel... So this is where I have a very controversial opinion on that. I get it. I understand it. We all have a right to protect what we need in our energies. But what I don't appreciate is the stigma on people who are still, who may be forever in the closet in regard to trusting their families. If their families, if your family is going to make your life difficult in telling them the truth, what is the point? Unless you have to. I think sometimes we have to keep the people closest to us on a need to know basis. So maybe at some point, let's say you're you're dating, you're dating the greatest person you've ever been with, and you see if you have you have a future with this person. You have an you have the opportunity to escape your current nuclear family, and this person can be your family, or maybe you're gonna start a family. Who knows? But until you have. And out, like a serious out away from your family, I don't think they've earned the right to be a part of that, to be a part of your social life. I don't think they've, they've just, they've just told, they've just lost their rights to your honesty, in my opinion. And I know it's going to be sad and awkward and annoying to keep your sexuality from them. But I do think that I think sometimes in un, un, under unfortunate circumstances, people have a right to live a double life. And I think oftentimes they should live a double life. If honesty is going to get them hurt by people who should support them, let alone honesty that isn't hurting anyone anyhow, but lo and behold, your parents are crazy. So I know it's all, it's all a tough pill to swallow. You have a right, you have a divine human right to protect yourself from anybody, even your family. And no matter how much your parents may try to guilt you and say, we brought you into this world, we paid for school. They chose to have a child. We don't, we no longer give awards for bare minimums. The fact that you didn't die, you know, the fact that they kept you alive, and the fact that they did all the things they are legally required to do with the child, they kept you in school, they kept you housed and fed. Well, we won't even, we're not saying congratulations. That was, that was the purpose of their choice. That is parenting. They chose to parent and now they're falling short. So they haven't earned they haven't earned the right to accessing your entire life. And they're going to want access to that because they're going to be curious to know how you're doing and what you're up to. But you know what? In this particular case, you need to protect yourself. In order to protect yourself, in this case, you're going to have to lie. And I don't think there's any shame to be had about that. You know, the same way, like, my dad thinks he's my emergency contact if I were to try, and he's not going to take responsibility for, if I were to have a, try to have a conversation with my father about why he's not my emergency contact, it wouldn't be productive. I have learned that my parents will never choose to have, they will never choose to learn and grow ever. So a conversation with my dad is just going to make me look and feel like this petulant child. Like he's just going to get mad and maybe they'll call me crazy or I'm just a bad kid 
by disengaging. They're not going to learn. No, I can't trust you to be my emergency contact. That is why it is my, I would love for you to be my emergency contact, but this is in response to your actions that you cannot be trusted to take care of me. They're never going to hear that. And I've tried to have given them chance and chance and my whole life. I've given them chances to earn, to earn more rights to access to my life and they cannot stop shitting all over it. So in order to protect myself, I have to, I have to protect myself. I have to withhold information. And sometimes I have to lie to my parents and it isn't ideal. But when you're, when you're working with, when you're trying to navigate in a system unfairly and unjustly stacked against you, you have a right to self-defense, baby. And I think you're going to have to lie to your parents. I think you have a right to lie to your parents. And I think we call it self-defense. I think that's entirely fair to call that self-defense. So what does this mean for you? Well, for starters, you know, you're probably going to grieve. You're going to grieve the relationship you wish you could have had. You know, this would end up been great if your parents were supportive of this totally harmless thing. That's none of their business to begin with and chose not to be jerks. You could have a really beautiful relationship and we all want beautiful relationships with our family and your parents have made that impossible. So you're going to grieve what could have been. You're going to grieve what you wish could have been, but it's out of our control. You only get two parents and your parents drop the ball. And so now what do we do? So you grieve the parents they could have been and the parents you were rooting for that you wish they could have been, that you thought perhaps you saw potential in them to be. You grieve the death of that potential. And then you thoughtfully surround yourself with people who do support you. You thoughtfully raise your standards as high as you can. But relationships of any kind, friendships, significant others. You also build your self-esteem where your parents are failing you. If your parents are making you feel selfish, dig into that, work on that. If that has become contagious energy, you need to overcome that obstacle. Get to know yourself on a deeper level. How are you, how is, understand that they are wrong and reevaluate all the ways in which you are generous and positive and, and harmless, right? So we build your self-esteem and we build your friendship group. We build your friendships and we build with people who are supportive and loving and see the best in you and bring out the best in you. Unlike your parents, we replace your parents with new models. It won't be exactly what good parents could have been, but it will certainly be enough. You know, it's unfortunate that I can say, you know, you're not the first who's been through something like this. And not that that makes it any better. You know, suck just sucks. Just because someone breaks their leg doesn't mean that, oh, everybody breaks their leg. So it's like, okay, no, like a broken leg is still a broken leg. It still sucks. But the good news is you do have a lot of resources you can tap into. These are conversations that have been happening for some time. I'm sure you'll talk to a lot of people who have been through exactly this and they too can give you pointers, support guidance. They can put you in directions of awesome groups to get to know. You have resources and you do have support. The support exists. You have access to that support. It's out there. You are not alone and you are not a freak. Your parents suck. And for that, I am so, so sorry. Okay.
I hope I can help a little bit. It just, it just sucks so bad, baby. It really does. And I, I hope, I think it's important that you don't brush, you know, try to sweep that under the rug. I hope it's important to me that you don't try to normalize this experience. It is bad and all of your feelings are valid. This is really, really terrible parenting that you are suffering on behalf of, and that's not fair. And it's the death of potential otherwise, and it's just sad, baby. It's tragic. But you will be fine. You will meet lots of people who understand you, support you, love you. You won't, you know, I can't say you won't always want your parents to meet a different standard of potential, but I can certainly promise you, you certainly you won't need your parents. You won't need that from your parents. And like I said before, self-defense, you have a right to self-defense. And in this case, you have a right to lie. Okay. Okay. Big hug. Oh, I love you so much. You really are incredible, you know that. <laughs> yeah. And what you just went through was really gnarly. Just keep meeting cool people. I'm telling you, you're not going to need them. You are going to be just fine. You're going to live your life to the fullest. You're going to date exceptional people. You're going to feel so comfortable and confident in your own skins right around the corner. This moment is temporary. You're going to claw your way out. There is a rainbow on the other side of the storm. Ha ha ha. A rainbow. The relevance. <laughs> but really though, I mean it. There is a rainbow on the other side of the storm. And it exists in a whole world. Outside of this house. Outside of this family. That is yours to explore. Okay. Oh, my baby, you're my baby. You know that, right? You know I love you so much. You're one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. You're one of those people for me. Yeah, where my parents fall short, you fill in, you know? You got so much to offer, and you fill in for a lot of the void. <laughs> Yeah. That has been brought about by my shitty parents. But really, you're you're such a valuable friend. Let me be that friend to you, okay? Thanks for being my emergency contact. <laughs> I love you. Okay. You want to eat something? This stuff is really good. And <laughs> we can um plan together. We can work out an if then list. We'll figure out what we want to say to your parents to get away and <laughs> to create distance, I think is required for you to explore your best life without their negative impact. Figure out what we want to say to them next. And then I like to call this an if then list. So if you're if you're feeling stress and anxiety about well, if they say this or if they do that, well then we, we figure out, well then you'll do or say what to that thing. So we'll strategize all the possibilities that we can conceive of that you may fear in the future. If they if they if they do this, then you'll do that. If they say this, then you'll do that. So that way you will feel prepared and and how do I put this? Just the the weight of your parents' presence won't feel so looming. You'll have it, you'll feel under control. Okay. Okay, I love you. Okay, the first thing we're gonna pull out. Oh my gosh, I found the best cookies too. And just you wait and see them. <laughs> 